Duarte observed with befitting manner amid various programs, President and Chief Advisor pay homage to martyrs in Shikha Uniban. Armed Forces once again recognize a symbol of confidence by standing beside students, mass people during the anti-discrimination movement and post-movement, says Chief Advisor Professor Muhammad Yunus. Former Prime Minister Khalid Azia joins Armed Forces Day program. Shena Kunjo feels proud to have the BNP chairperson after a decade, says the Chief Advisor. Five-member election commission formed with former Secretary A.M.M. Nasiruddin as Chief Election Commissioner. Provision to ban political parties not included in the tribunal ordinance after consulting with everyone for the sake of justice, says Law Advisor. Full list of martyrs and injured in July-August protests to be published by December 31st, says Sargis Alam. ICC issues arrest warrant against Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, former Defense Minister Yoav Gallant and Hamas leader Mohammed Dev over crimes... against humanity and Mohammedan sporting club to face Boshantara Kings in Bangladesh challenge cup tomorrow afternoon assalamu alaikum I'm Musrat Nazi welcoming you to news at 10 you have just had the headlines now we move on to the news into details বীর মুক্তিযোদ্ধা শহীদ রাষ্ট্রপতি জিয়াউর রহমানের স্ত্রী বেগম খালেদিয়া আজ এখানে আমাদের মধ্যে উপস্থিত আছেন এক যুগ ধরে তিনি এই মহাসম্মানে অংশগ্রহণ করার সুযোগ পান নাই আজকে সুযোগ পেয়েছেন আমরা সবাই সবাই আনন্দিত এবং গর্বিত যে আমরা এই সুযোগ দিতে পেরেছি আপনাকে শারীরিক অসুস্থতা সত্ত্বেও এই বিশেষ দিবসে সবার সঙ্গে শরীর খাওয়ার জন্য আপনাকে আবারও ধন্যবাদ In his speech, Professor Muhammad Yunus recalled the contribution of the armed forces and said, since the independence of the country, the armed forces has been working standing by the people in nation building and tackling disasters alongside protecting the country's independence and sovereignty. The chief advisor said in recent anti-discrimination movement and post-movement, the armed forces stood beside the people by standing by the students and the general people. He said the armed forces have been recognized as a symbol of confidence by standing beside the people of the country. I am the only one who has been in August, and I am the only one who has been in August, and I am the only one who has been in August. দেশ পুনর্গঠনের জন্য একটি নতুন সুযোগ সৃষ্টি করেছে তাদের এই আত্মত্যাগ জাতি চিরদিন শ্রদ্ধা বরে স্মরণ করবে বাংলাদেশ শান্তিপ্রিয় এক দেশ প্রতিবেশী সহ সকল রাষ্ট্রের সাথে বন্ধুত্বপূর্ণ ও শ্রদ্ধাশীল সহযোগিতার মাধ্যমে সহস্থানে আমাদের মূল লক্ষ্য যে কোনো আগ্রাসী বহু শত্রুর আক্রমণ থেকে দেশের সার্বভৌমত্ব রক্ষার জন্য আমরা সদা প্রস্তুত এবং দৃঢ় সংকল্পবদ্ধ সে লক্ষ্যে উন্নত বিশ্বের সঙ্গে তাল মিলিয়ে আমাদের সেনা নৌ ও বিমান বাহিনী পুনর্গঠন সশস্ত্র বাহিনীর উদ্দেশ্য সদস্যদের উন্নত প্রশিক্ষণ ও বাহিনী সমূহকে আধুনিক প্রযুক্তির সংযুক্তির প্রয়াস অব্যাহত রয়েছে Heads of international organizations, 
judges, secretaries, former military officers, journalists, academics, political and eminent persons, coordinators of the anti-discrimination students movement and retired officers, among other dignitaries. Chief Advisor Professor Mohammed Yunus said, the interim government wants to build Bangladesh in such a way that the people are the true source of all power. The Chief Advisor was addressing a reception accorded to the gallantry award-winning freedom fighters and their inheritors organized by the Armed Forces Division in Dhaka Cantonment's multi-purpose complex on the Armed Forces Day. Recalling the contribution of the armed forces to the Great War of Liberation, Professor Yunus said on this day in 1971, the valiant members of the armed forces and the common people of Bangladesh jointly launched a coordinated attack on the Pakistani occupation forces. As a result, the country's victory was achieved and Bangladesh emerged as an independent and sovereign state, he said. About the recent student-led uprising, Professor Yunus said, a new Bangladesh was also achieved on August 5th through a student people revolution. The chief advisor said, we will maintain friendship with all states, mutual respect, trust, confidence and cooperation will be the base of our foreign policy. We must work together to address climate crisis and consolidate global peace and economy, he added. The chief advisor said his government's pledge to the freedom fighters, martyred and injured students and others who joined the student-led revolution is to build a beautiful and prosperous future, utilizing the opportunity that the people brought to build a new Bangladesh in exchange for their sacrifice. Mohan Muktijuddi Virattukun Navodane Shikriti Shuru বীর মুক্তিযোদ্ধাদের কল্যাণে বিভিন্ন সুযোগ সুবিধা চলমান রয়েছে বিগত পাঁচই আগস্ট দু হাজার চব্বিশ সালে ছাত্র জনতার বিপ্লবের মধ্য দিয়ে আমরা এক নতুন বাংলাদেশের সূচনা করেছি এই নতুন দেশে আমাদের দায়িত্ব সকল মানুষকে একটি বৃহত্তর পরিবারের বন্ধনে আবদ্ধ করা পরিবারে মতভেদ থাকবে বাকবিতণ্ডা হবে আমরা কেউ কারো শত্রু হব না কাউকে তার মতের জন্য শত্রু মনে করব না কাউকে ধর্মের কারণে শত্রু মনে করব না আমরা সবাই সমান আমরা সবাই একই পরিবারের সদস্য কেউ কারো উপরে না কেউ কারো নিচে না এই ধারণা আমরা জাতীয় জীবনে প্রতিষ্ঠিত করতে চাই আমরা সকল রাষ্ট্রের সঙ্গে বন্ধুত্ব বজায় রাখব আমাদের পররাষ্ট্রনীতির ভিত্তি হবে পারস্পরিক সম্মান আস্থা বিশ্বাস ও সহযোগিতা জলবায়ু সংকট মোকাবেলায় এবং বৈশ্বিক শান্তি অর্থনীতি সুসংহতকরণে আমাদের একত্রে কাজ করতে হবে নতুন বাংলাদেশ গড়ার যে সুযোগ ছাত্র জনতার সাহস ও আত্মত্যাগের বিনিময়ে আমরা সম্প্রতি অর্জন করলাম সেটাকে কাজে লাগিয়ে আমাদের সুন্দর ও সমৃদ্ধশালী ভবিষ্যৎ গড়তে হবে আমাদের বীর মুক্তিযোদ্ধা এবং তাদের উত্তরাধিকারীদের কল্যাণার্থে যা কিছু প্রয়োজন তা করার জন্য Earlier, the chief advisor, Professor Mohammed Yunus, handed over gifts to the family members of the seven Bishreshto. On the occasion of the Armed Forces Day, President Mohammad Shahbuddin and Chief Advisor Professor Mohammad Yunus paid rich tributes to the martyred members of armed forces placing wreath at Shikha Unirban at Dhaka Cantonment this morning. At first, President Mohammad Shahbuddin paid rich tribute by placing wreaths at Shikha Unirban. After placing wreath, the President stood in solemn silence for some time and the bug Buggles played the last post. A smartly turned out contingent from the three services presented state salute. Chiefs of three services were present.
President Mohammad Shahabuddin signed the visitor's book. Later, Chief Advisor Professor Mohammad Yunus paid tribute to the martyred members of armed forces by placing wreaths at the Shikha Uniban. The Chief Advisor stood in solemn silence for some time and the Buggles played the last post. A smartly turned out contingent from three services presented state salute. Chief Advisor Professor Mohammad Yunus signed the visitor's book. Later, chiefs of the three services paid a courtesy call on Chief Advisor Professor Mohammad Yunus at Armed Forces Division. Earlier, Chief of Army Staff General Wakir Zaman, Chief of Naval Staff Admiral Mohammad Nazmul Hassan, and Chief of Air Staff Air Chief Marshal Hassan Mahmud Khan paid tributes to the martyred members of armed forces by placing wreaths at Shikha Uniban. On the occasion of Armed Forces Day, Chief of Army Staff General Wakiru Zaman, Chief of Naval Naval Staff Admiral Mohammad Nazmul Hassan and Chief of Air Staff Air Chief Marshal Hassan Mahmud Khan paid a courtesy call on President Mohammad Shahabuddin at Bongo Bhabun this evening. Later, in a briefing, President's Press Secretary Mohammad Joinal Abidin said that during the meeting, the President greeted the members of the armed forces on the occasion of the day. Chiefs of the three services informed the President about activities of their respective forces taken on the occasion of the Armed Forces Day. President Mohammad Shahabuddin lauded the role of armed forces members in maintaining law and order and establishing peace in the country after the anti-discrimination student movement. Secretaries to the President were present. Former Secretary A.M.M. Nasiruddin has been appointed as Chief Election Commissioner CEC of the Bangladesh Election Commission. Along with him, four election commissioners have been appointed. The commissioners are former Additional Secretary Muhammad Anwarul Islam Sharkar, former District and Sessions Judge Abdul Rahman Masood, former Joint Secretary Begum Tahmida Ahmed, and Brigadier General Retired Abul Fazal Muhammad Sanaullah. President Mohammad Shahabuddin has appointed them following the Section 118.1 of the Constitution. The Cabinet Division has issued Gazette notification today in this regard, saying it will come to effect immediately. Mass media editors have recommended election of the People's Representative through direct vote by increasing women's seats in the Parliament. They gave the suggestions at a meeting with the Election Reform Commission at Nirbachan Bhabon in the capital today. After the meeting, the editors informed that emphasis was laid to increase women's seats up to 100 after holding discussions with the political parties. Besides, recommendations was also made to cancel non-resident representation and arrangement be made to carry out election campaign through state expenses to stop use of money in election. Dr. Bodhiul Alam Mojumdar, head of the Election Reform Commission, said that formulation of voter list on the basis of NID is being considered and due to this anyone could become voter even a day before polling. Meanwhile, Election Reform Commission hold a meeting with election observers at Agargao Nirbachan Bhabon today. President, Chief Executive and General Secretaries of 23 local observer organizations were present on the occasion. Later, briefing newsman, member of the Election Reform Commission, Dr. Muhammad Abdul Alim said that there was detailed discussion as to how to solve the challenges faced by the observers. 
The observers raised demand for the training, honorarium, and issuance of identity cards through EC. They also demanded that the EC should utilize the post-election reports. Law advisor Dr. Asif Nozul said, the provision of banning political parties has not been included in the International Crimes Tribunal ordinance for the sake of proper justice. However, a provision has been included for some cases to allow appeal against interlocutory orders of the International Crimes Tribunal to ensure purity of justice. He said this in response to queries from journalists after visiting the renovation work of the International Crimes Tribunal's main building today. Responding to a query if the provision of appealing against interlocutory orders will delay the justice, the law advisor said this provision has been included in limited cases to ensure purity of justice. Housing and Public Works advisor Adilu Rahman Khan and the prosecutors of the tribunal were present. On November 20th, the advisory council of the interim government gave final approval to the draft of the International Crimes Tribunal Amendment Ordinance 2024. Joint Chief of London-based the Genocide 37 law firm Toby Cadman has been appointed as the Special Advisor to Bangladesh's International Crimes Tribunal Chief Prosecutor Mohammad Tajul Islam. Cadman disclosed this in a post in social media on Wednesday night Bangladesh time. He wrote in the social media, I am feeling happy and honored to announce that I have been appointed as Special Prosecutor Advisor of Bangladesh's International Crimes Tribunal. Cadman's law firm gave a similar post in social media. It said that the Joint Chief of the Chamber, Toby Cadman, has been appointed as Special Prosecutorial Advisor of the Chief Prosecutor of Bangladesh's International Crimes Tribunal. His role will be to give suggestions on all matters relating to International Crimes Tribunal. Prosecutor Ghazi M. H. Tamim confirmed BTV about the appointment of Cadman. The full list of the martyred and injured in July-August movement will be published by 31st December. Sarjis Alam, General Secretary of July Shahid Sriti Foundation, disclosed this at a press briefing today at July Shahid Sriti Foundation office today. The briefing was arranged on the roadmap regarding the steps taken for injured during the student people upsurge. CEO of the foundation, Mir Mahabubur Rahman Snigtho, spoke about financial assistance for the injured. He informed that financial assistance at a time has been increased from Taka 1 lakh to Taka 3 lakh. Now international news. The International Criminal Court has issued warrants of arrest for Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu and former Defense Minister Yoav Gallant as well as Hamas military commander Mohammad Deif. Meanwhile, Gaza Civil Defense Agency said today that at least 88 people, including some minorities, killed in Israeli airstrikes on the war-ravaged Palestinian territory. Some babies were killed in nighttime shelling of the Nusrat refugee camp, Civil Defense spokesman Mahmoud Basel said, adding a shell killed two other people west of the camp in central Gaza. A drone strike killed two people, including a 15-year-old girl, at a school-turned-shelter for displaced people. Military campaign has forced at least one lakh people to flee for Gaza City and nearby areas, said Louise Waterridge, spokeswoman for the UN Palestinian Refugee Agency, UNRWA. In Jabalia, also in Gaza's far north, emergency workers on Wednesday recovered the body the night before. Israel's military offensive has killed nearly 44,000 people in Gaza. At 36 people were killed and more than 50 wounded yesterday in Israeli airstrikes on the city of Palmyra, renowned for its ancient ruins. The Syrian Observatory for Human Rights, a Britain-based war monitor said the Israeli strikes had killed as many as 61 people. The Israeli enemy launched an air attack from the direction of the Altan area, targeting a number of buildings in the city of Palmyra, the defense ministry said in a statement. The attack killed 36 people and wounded more than 50, and caused significant material damage, it added. The Syrian Observatory for Human Rights, however, gave a higher toll, which it expected to rise due to the presence of seriously injured people. 
The strikes targeting Palmyra, a modern city adjacent to Greco-Roman ruins, are the deadliest in the Syria since an all-out war erupted between Iran-backed Hezbollah and Israel on September 23rd. Israel rarely comments on individual strikes in Syria but has repeatedly said it will not allow Iran to expand its presence in the country. The United States has vetoed a UN Sec Security Council resolution that called for an immediate, unconditional and permanent ceasefire in Gaza on the grounds it would not have secured the release of hostages. We made clear throughout the negotiations we could not support an unconditional ceasefire that failed to release the hostages. Because, as this council has previously called for, a durable end to the war must come with the release of the hostages, Deputy U.S. Ambassador Robert Wood said following the veto on Wednesday. These two urgent goals are inextricably linked. This resolution abandoned that necessity and for that reason the United States could not support it, Wood added. Seven American citizens are still being held in Gaza. We will not forget them, he said. The resolution put to the 15-member council by its 10 non-permanent members demanded an immediate, unconditional and permanent ceasefire to be respected by all parties and further reiterates its demand for the immediate and unconditional release of all hostages. Now a highlight of Chinese traditional culture. As you know, China is a versatile country with colorful ethnic culture and their festivals. The people of Yuna province are very fortunate to watch multicolor festival in pre-winter and autumn season. The New Year celebration takes place in Kunming in the end of November every year. The people of Hani ethnic group performed bamboo dances with visitors to celebrate the New Year festival according to the traditional Hani calendar in Kunming city, Yunnan province. The Hani people enjoyed singing, dancing, playing on swings and participating in a variety of activities to celebrate this grand festival and worship their gods and ancestors. Every year, visitors flock to Yunnan to experience the traditional and culture of the ethnic groups and the unique charm of the region. Bangladesh is likely to discuss the extradition of ousted Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina during the upcoming Bangladesh-India Foreign Office consultation FOC scheduled for early December in Dhaka. Foreign Ministry spokesperson Taufik Hassan said during a weekly media briefing at the ministry today. Sheikh Hasina, who has been residing in India since August 5th after fleeing Dhaka, is facing trial in the International Crimes Tribunal over allegations related to mass killings during the July-August uprising. In this connection, Hassan said that the Foreign Ministry has yet to receive any official directive to begin Sheikh Hasina's extradition process. Bangladesh Foreign Secretary Mohammad Joshimuddin and his Indian counterpart Vikram Misri will lead their respective delegation to the FOC, which will cover a wide range of bilateral issues, including the potential extradition of Sheikh Hasina. Regarding the review of agreements and memorandums of understanding between the two nations, Hassan said these agreements fall under the jurisdiction of various ministries in Bangladesh. Bhutanese ambassador to Bangladesh, Rinchen Kyunsil, paid a courtesy call on BNP Secretary General Mr. Fakrul Islam Alamgir. The meeting was held at BNP Chairperson's political office in the capital's Gulshan today. They discussed different issues of bilateral interests between the two nations. BNP Standing Committee member Amir Khosru Mahmoud Chaudhry and International Affairs Committee member Shama Obayat were present. Later, Amir Khosru Mahmoud Chaudhry said, Bhutan is keen on exporting hydropower to Bangladesh and it will expand business fields between the two countries. He said Bhutan wants to take the SARC ahead and BNP agreed to it. Cultural Affairs Advisor Mustafa Sarwar Faruqi has said, the spirit of the liberation war was renewed through the 2024 anti-discrimination student mass upsurge. He stated this at a press conference at the Cultural Affairs Ministry's conference room at the Secretariat today. Freedom of expression was speed up further after the July-August mass upsurge, the advisor said, adding that Bangladesh belongs to everyone and none should be alienated on the basis of religion. High officials of the ministry, including Director General of Bangladesh Shilpa Kola Academy, Dr. Syed Jamil Ahmed, Bangla Academy Director General, Professor Dr. Muhammad Azam, Executive Director of Kobi Nozul Institute, Muhammad Latiful Islam Shibli, were present. 
Nine more dengue patients died, while 1,214 more patients were infected across the country during the past 24 hours. A release of the Directorate General of the Health Services said this year 436 people have died of dengue. The total number of infected is 84,368 people. Now news on sports. Boshundara Kings will face Mohammedan Sporting Club in the 2.0 Challenge Cup football match tomorrow. The match will start at 5 p.m. at the Boshundara Kings Arena in the capital. It is exceptional one-match competition is being organized before the start of the new season of the football in Bangladesh. Treble title holders Boshundara and treble runners-up traditional Mohammedan are taking part in the lone match tournament. Bangladesh will take on West Indies in the first test of the two-match series in Antigua tomorrow. The match will start at 8 p.m. Bangladesh Standard Time at Sir Viv Richards Stadium. The Tigers have played a total of 20 tests against the Caribbean. They have won four and lost 14 matches. The two other tests were drawn. Bangladesh national blind cricket team is now on their way to Pakistan to participate in the fourth blind T20 World Cup. The visually impaired cricketers leave Dhaka for Pakistan via Thailand at 1.20 p.m. today. Bangladesh blind cricket team is scheduled to reach Pakistan at 12 p.m. Bangladesh Standard Time. The tournament will be held in Multan, Pakistan on November 23rd. The final will be played on December 3rd. Bangladesh will face India on November 23rd, Nepal on November 24th, Sri Lanka on November 25th, Pakistan on November 26th, Afghanistan on November 27th and South Africa on November 30th. The total of seven teams including Bangladesh are participating in the tournament. India will take on Australia in the first test of the five-match series in Perth tomorrow. The match will start at 8.20 a.m. Bangladesh Standard Time. Australia and India have faced each other 107 times in tests. India won 32 and Australia 45, while 29 matches drawn and one match tied. To end the bulletin, headlines.